Duke, UCLA, two of the most talented and celebrated basketball institutions in the land collide today. UCLA from the left coast showcases a mix of seasoned seniors and outstanding freshmen. But with a shocking loss yesterday by number one ranked North Carolina, it is Coach K and the number two ranked Dukies who are shooting for the coveted honor of the number one ranking in the land, Duke and UCLA. on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. But everyone would rather be <laughs> indoors at the Cameron. It doesn't get any better than this. It is Duke and UCLA as we approach tournament time. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. The storyline is very simple. With that shocking loss by North Carolina to North Carolina State yesterday, if Duke wins today, they climb to number one. Now remember this, the number one seed in the East is very important for the Blue Devils or the Tar Heels. That regional finals in Greensboro, that's as close as you can get, folks, to home cooking. Let me bring in my partner, Dick Vitale. Dick, what is life like at UCLA without Jelani McCoy now? Well, I'll tell you, Brad, they missed the shot blocker. He was a dominator in the lane when he was really playing on the best of his game. But the bottom line is UCLA has got three seniors that have won 99 games, three Pac-10 titles, an NCAA title. We're talking Chris Johnson, Toby Bailey, and J.R. Henderson, who's having an All-American kind of year. Throw in a tremendous freshman, a diaper dandy, Baron Davis. They're still explosive. We'll be ready to go, but first we're going to be hearing from John Saunders after these messages. These two great schools have met since 1990, but this will be their final scheduled time in the 90s. And if you listen carefully to Duke, they say that this starting lineup wants no more part of the Blue Devils. Well, we'll see about that. The Bruins starting five, J.R. Henderson enjoying an All-American season for UCLA as you look at your Toyota starting lineup for the Bruins. Meanwhile, for the Blue Devils, and this is a deep Blue Devil team, Rashawn McLeod, third in scoring. He'll be spelled a bit up front today. We're expecting to see Elton Brand, an amazing story, coming back from a broken bone in his foot. The Blue Devils, the home whites. The officials are good crew. Duke Etzel, Mike Wood, Carl Hess are here for this one. Controlled by the Devils. Right away, they break and miss and rebound as Johnson, Chris Johnson, comes away, and here's the Bruins' first set. Bailey up, firing. In and out. Back comes Wojo for the Blue Devils. Langdon at the free throw line. Field goal. I got a feeling you're going to see Langdon with a big game today, Brad. He was sensational in warm-ups. What an athletic ability. Transition, UCLA running the court. J.R. Henderson with the deuce. And Henderson has tied the game at two as we're in the early going here. But one thing you want to shut down, the lethal weapons of Duke from the perimeter. They can flat out shoot that trifecta. McLeod trying to post low. Henderson on him. No McCoy to the lane. The jump shot, no good. And again, the Bruins with a defensive rebound. I'll tell you, Brent, they start two diaper dandies in the backcourt. Here's Davis. Brand. What a beauty he is. Left hand drive misses. No follow. Well, they start Davidson Watson. They're well going. And he misses. Cole and another rebound by Baron Davis, the 6 1 freshman guard. Bailey, the three for Toby. Toby Bailey, who can ever forget that electricity it provided in 95 when they won the national championship as a freshman in beating Arkansas. Hey, we're going to see, partner, an up and down game. This is going to be really a fast paced transition game. Wojo bounce pass low, Dick. And Battier comes away with his first field goal. Shane Battier, one of the great freshmen here. 
Well, Mattie, a tremendous defensive player, may ultimately become the best defensive player ever at Duke, according to Krzyzewski. Coach Kay loves him. Here's Watson, the other point guard out of Kansas City. Lucius Allen was from there. He had a great career. From the perimeter, it's only a two on the miss. Wojo with the rebound. Duke pressures. Not many offensive rebounds so far. Lightning pull up three. Got it. I told you, Brent, he's going to have a big day. He was spoken in today in the warm up. He felt it. You can see the perspiration during the warm up. I think I told you, I said, Brent, he's ready to play. Now, here come the Bruins. They're off to a good start, too, with the crazies rocking behind them. Bailey's going to go. Beautiful running hook, but couldn't get it to fall. He battles back and misses. Push back on the side. No. Still on the glass. Still Bruins. Miss again. Tap miss. Really getting after it on the glass. Good Bruins off. ball, Dick. Good offensive rebound is showing that athletic ability, UCLA. Dick, they were dominant on the glass here. As you take a look at this replay, they just couldn't get it to fall. There's Bailey. I'm going to watch with the second effort. Here goes J.R. Henderson. They just keep it alive. They keep it alive. 7-5 in the early going. UCLA ball out of bounds. Fresh 35. Bailey cuts back. Wild out of control. And there is that freshman, Baron Davis, to the corner. Bailey misfires on the three. And now the Devils come back down. Here's Langdon. He'll be a versatile player, a multi-dimensional, but could be a little streaky shooter. Wojo open. McLeod, offensive rebound and a put back for the hoop. What a big year he's having, Brent. Some people say all. Oh, CC, certainly one of the top 10 in the league. He has been magnificent. Had 27 in a recent game when they needed a big performance against NC State. 25 on Florida State. Davis in the corner on the dribble. What a good looking freshman. Wojo knocks it away and Davis regains control. He wanted to say hello to his grandma. They said, please say hello. I said, Barry, we'll say hi to your grandma for you. Here's Henderson, number 52. Thought about it, but he'll give it back to Johnson. Now the shot clock runs down to five. They're going to have to go to work. Johnson, one-on-one. -on -one. Pull up at the line. There's a foul. A whistle is going to be called on the shot. And Burgess, Chris Burgess, a 6'10 freshman who passed up going to UCLA for coming to Duke, commits the personal foul. Yeah, one of his choices, along with BYU, Brigham Young University, where his sister is, as you look here at the Cameron, unbelievable versus non-ACC. Only two L's. And those two? Big two, Ten teams. That's right, Illinois and Michigan. Had the pleasure to do both those games. Back to Henderson deep now. Fresh 35 on the clock, 16-19. 9-5, the Devils ahead. The Bruins need a hoop right now. Man-to-man -man defense, Burgess playing against J.R. Henderson. Johnson's gonna go for it. They're just missing shots and no foul, I mean no basket. There was a pushing foul. It's against the Bruins. They commit a foul underneath the glass, so no basket on that shot. It stays at 9-5. Johnson showed his ability around the basket. He's an outstanding scorer. He can play on a perimeter as well. As you look at Mike Wood talking to Coach K. Take a look right. Across the timeline, Langdon, and this is Wojo. Far outside. Back to Langdon. Feels it again. Misses this time. Underneath. Foul against UCLA, and very unhappy is JR. They have to watch out for foul trouble, Brent. They're not a very deep basketball team, a very young team. When they found out, as you look at Steve Lavin, in their first game against North Carolina, they got blown out. 15-54 left in the first. Duke, an early leader. And here at the Cameron, the score 9-5 after that timeout. UCLA has had opportunities. They just have been unable to convert, Dick. They're only 2 of 13 from the field, so they're controlling the glass well, and Duke is 4 of 9. Well, they're getting some shots. As you look up right now, field goal percentage, 50%. Again, the bottom line is, though, they got to get better shots. I think they're going to make the extra pass. They're going to have to defend a lot better, too. Duke's getting some easy looks at the goal. Now the Bruins trailing 11-5. So they expend all that energy, but not much to show for it on the scoreboard so far. Bailey has been extremely active, and he has that one three-point basket, and that's it. Here's Chris Johnson. He has not scored yet. They drop in low, and that's Travis Reed seeing his first action. They miss from the perimeter. Duke gives them one and out. Good inside-outside action right there. Duke really running the court. And a putback beautiful for Chris Burgess, the freshman. I'll tell you, he's got a lot of friends here. Mr. Burgess getting up on the offensive board. California, he said bye-bye to the West Coast. In fact, that's one of the reasons that UCLA doesn't want to continue this series. That Mike is very upset. He really feels this
this is bad for basketball. Davis fires at three, and he's got it. What a good-looking player he is. One of the best freshmen in the country, and perhaps the best freshman point guard. Langdon responds and gets it right back. And now Trajan Langdon with eight points. Trajan Langdon on fire. Baron Davis, what an impact diaper dandies. It's blocked that time by Burgess. Outlet. Here comes Langdon, an easy deuce. I'll tell you, Brenda, shooting the ball too quickly. they got to make the extra pass. Listen to this place run. The 22nd T.O. Beautiful putback by Burgess, who is seeing early action here against the Bruins at the other end. He smashes it out. They then bust it to their leading score. Trajan Langdon rolls in 10 points, and Duke is on a 16 to 3 run. Well, they're a great spurt basketball team. But you think about UCLA, and they certainly have so much pride. Their senior class has won three Pac-10 titles. They won an NCAA title in 95 with Jim Herrick. And then they had the controversy, and Steve Lavin stepped in last year, did an outstanding job, got rewarded with a big-time extension. He got big money, man. He got a year league. He got four years, about $3 million, two and a half, actually. Now, what's going to happen, Bill? <laughs> Don't you dare pour my uh, <laughs> Just lose it in the lane. Loose ball, and a foul's going to be called against Duke. That foul's against Battier. Two foul on number 31, Shane Battier. His first. We take a look at the senior production right here. Look at that. We talk about, wow. They produced big time last year. They got beat in that final eight by Minnesota, that outstanding team of Clem Haskins. They had a run beating Charleston Southern. They beat Xavier and Iowa State, and then lost to Minnesota. And who could ever forget the performance of Toby Bailey in the final game, the NCAA tournament, when he was brilliant. I think they miss a kid from last year by the name of Cameron Dollar. He was the glue. He was such a winner, a competitor. This is Earl Watson. He's a freshman. You got to remember, they're playing freshman guards, and they're 20 and 5. Bailey is pushed, but no foul call on it. Drop down low to Reed, who's got to track it down in the corner. Now they go back to Bailey, and the foul is going to be called on Trajan Lane. Well, you know, the last time they played two freshmen together, you remember these kids. Michael Holt, who's an assistant coach, and Ron Foster, the rocket. As you look at Michael, the assistant coach at UCLA. And here is the story of the day. Yes, Number 42, Elton Grand. This is Daisy Mother the Daisy, back on the 28th of December. He underwent surgery on his left foot. The fifth metatarsal was broken. It is a minor medical miracle that the Duke medical staff has him back playing. Normally, you miss three and a half months with that injury. Bailey in and out, and Graham, who left the team the leading scorer and rebounder, has a rebound. And watch him fly down the floor. This changes the entire complexion for Duke. And the baseline is double. He's got great hands, Brent. When he catches the basketball inside, you're not going to get it away from him. What he provides for them is that inside presence, something they lack without him. But remember this, without him, they went 13-1. and one, So they didn't do big badly, losing only to North Carolina. But they did miss him in that one loss. Down low against Antoine Jamison. They need Brand next Saturday in that showdown with the Tar Heels. Henderson muscles in, and offensive foul is called. He's in foul trouble early now. That's JR. three. Yes, sir. If he goes to the sideline, this could get ugly. There's his first rebound. It's coming on the floor. And there's his mom. That's Calvin Hill sitting next to the mom. Grant Hill's dad. She says, that's my boy. I'm so proud of him. What a great kid, too, Brent. Beautiful student. Had over 1,100 on his SATs as a junior from out of Peekskill, New York. Now, William Avery, the freshman point guard. And when you think about this great Duke team, their better days are ahead of them. That's how young this ball club is. They put it back in Ricky Price's hand, seeing his first action. Avery's going to go with the three. Got it. I'll tell you, they are focused. Their concentration was unbelievable in a workout. They're trying to do it too much one-on-one, -on -one, Brent. They're not getting enough of ball movement and player movement, UCLA. UCLA ball on the arrow. 
I don't know about you, every time I see those uniforms, I reflect back to John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood, and those 10 national championships, and all the great players that wore that uniform. As you look at JR, one of their great players now sitting on a sideline with three. UCLA trying to find a scoring presence in this game. Avery with the defensive rebound. They've been really struggling the last three weeks of the season, not playing as well as they did early. This is great to defense deck, as you know, traveling the call against Avery. He took that step too early and it'll be UCLA ball. That's a good point, partner. They do a tremendous job defensively. That's one of the trademarks of Mike Krzyzewski. His teams really get after you on a defensive end. It started usually by a little guy right there next to him, Mr. Wojciechowski, the Rambo man. Ricky Price from out of California, another kid that was wanted big time by UCLA. Watson on a runner. That time an offensive rebound and the putback for Travis Reed. Reed with that good offensive rebound, a penetration by Watson from out of Kansas City. Where they're gonna get great news on Wednesday. Remember, I'm telling you now, Javon Rush, super player from Kansas City, is gonna announce for UCLA. Price and the shot was partially blocked. Bruins come back. Now they can put together field goals. He'll join next year. Keep on him. Ray Young, a great player. Quick shot by Davis. Three, his second of the game. And Baron Davis with six points. He's a big timer. He's a PT peer. Once he gets a little bit more under control, understands the nuances of how the big time Will game Adrian runs, Price. it takes time. And the bottom line is he stepped in and he's been sensational all year. Duke misses Wojo on the floor right now. Avery still learning the nuances of running this attack. Yeah, he's a freshman as well, and it's going to take Grant a little time to get his timing and his rhythm. Came off a screen, fired the three. Good, but he is a shooter. That's two threes for William Avery. I'll tell you, William Avery is a combo guard. He can play either slot. He had 21 in a big win over Arizona when they knocked down nine threes in the first half. Quick fire by Bailey. Didn't get the bounce, but Reed strong. Two offensive rebounds and back-to-back -back field goals for Travis, only a freshman. Yeah, Travis doing a good job working the glass inside. They're not blocking out. From the perimeter, Chris Carroll. He's one of those quiet guys who just does a job. He's a warrior, a tenacious competitor defensively. Bruins come back with a miss, and Reed skies, but this time can't control it, and Carwell's got it on the floor. The tempo of the game is exactly the way they would like to play the game. Dude. Davis is speed. Great pass to Watson. Foul from behind shooting. But I want to tell you, you fans of the Bruins at UCLA, you are really, well, I don't have to tell you, you've already been enjoying him. He can really get out and run the break, number five. Wow. Yeah, he can handle the ball really well. He's got superb quickness, came in with a big reputation. He was wanted very, very much by the people up in Kansas, and you can see why. And Roy Williams doesn't make too many mistakes. In fact, when you think of California, they've been really great. I mean, great to Kansas with all their great players over the years with Jock Vaughn and Paul Pierce now. I'll tell you, North Carolina State hitting 25 in a row yesterday. They showed you the value of shooting free throws on the road, and Watson has missed his first. If there was any way that State closed that door on the Tar Heels yesterday, they did not miss from here. And Watson misses his first two. If it's going to be upset City, you got to make those free throws. Yeah, make free throws and shoot the three. CC Harrison nailed seven threes against Carolina yesterday. Six up in the first half, though. Time out. We'll be right back. He didn't want to be tied to a desk. When he's indoor stadium earlier this year in the ACC it was Duke and North Carolina in a wild one in Chapel Hill the Tar Heels were dominant Antoine Jameson everybody's leader for player of the year led North Carolina to a rather easy win and they went wild in Chapel Hill now the crazies here in the Cameron Dick hope to return the favor next Saturday afternoon you and I'll be here. I'll tell you one thing Brant one of the great crowds I saw this year was that Carolina crowd but something tells me this place will be explosive here next Saturday. So the starters back on the floor. McLeod is eaten up by Reed who's playing very well off the Bruin bench. Lloyd tries to run it down for the Bruins from the corner. No. Get too many, too many wide open shots. This again. Oh, look at that. 
hustle. Look at that scrap. Look at that fight. We got a Bruin injured on the floor. Brandon Lloyd, the junior guard from Tulsa. He's a shooter. Lloyd's a shooter. Wojciechowski shows you young kids out there how there's a chance to play major college basketball. If you learn how to hustle and scrap and claw, look at this little guy. A lot of people never thought he'd be a major factor here, but he is the heart and soul of this team. Five rebounds, Dick, already. Yeah, it becomes contagious what he does to everyone else on the floor, his hustle. 27-15, 9-53 to go, and Lloyd replaced by Watson. He injured a foot when he went down, and they had to take Lloyd right out of the game. Burgess Just plays catch with Langdon. They keep it on the perimeter. Burgess getting a lot of playing time right now. Very active. What's it? Press all those West Coast people. McLeod. What a big time here he's had. He can go inside. He can go outside. He can shoot the three. First transfer to play here. Transfer on to Mike Krzyzewski to play here. St. John's University. Duke is hitting better than 60%, and UCLA only 6 of 24 with 9.13 left first half. Good pass on the inside to Reed. Couldn't score. He was rebound by McLeod. Reed was bothered by the size of Burgess right there. Execution is the key. You're seeing wide open shots for the Duke players here today. McLeod. Good help defensively by Reed. Double team. Usually they spot the open man. Burgess is wide open. They missed him. Langdon three. Yes. Can't give him open looks. Can't give him open looks from the perimeter. You got to shut down that perimeter game. They're lethal out there. Trajan Langdon, 13 already today. Ask Gary Williams. They knocked out 11 in the first half to blow out Maryland. Great defense again on the inside. UCLA ball. We're going to watch right now as you see the ball movement, how Langdon's going to get free. We're going to see the ball move to the wing. as McLeod with the double team. Now they're going to kick it back out. We're going to watch them reverse the ball. And we're going to see how, look at how freezing right here. Look how he's wide open here. They missed the big guy. They miss him right here. He was wide open. He was screaming and yelling, get me the ball for a jam. They lay off a nice fake coming down the baseline, draws a foul. He's had a great career, Toby Bailey. I mean, you look at his numbers over the four years. He's had himself an outstanding career at UCLA. And the thing that's really been amazing, he's been asked to play three different positions. The point guard, second guard as Burgess goes out, and the wing. He's more natural at that second guard slot. Matty A replaces Burgess for Coach Krzyzewski. Feel so bad for UCLA's kids and everybody involved with their program with the loss of Jelani McCoy. He's got to look at the mirror and not blame the media as a cop out and admit, number one, that he is the cause of his problem. And he's got to, young enough to get his life in order. Missed the three and into Wojo's hands. His six rebound. Great, Great lead pass down the floor. Battier will be shooting free throws. Battier, what a good looking freshman as well. So unselfish. He is the perfect player that John Wooden would love. Coach Wooden, who had that amazing run at UCLA, loved team players, and that's what Shane Battier is. Getting back to McCoy, though, we have not only McCoy, Jason Williams, who you and I saw play, was brilliant against Kentucky when he played so brilliantly. He's been suspended. Keon Clark. It's amazing, Brent, what's happening to so many young kids with so much ability. Here's the Tuesday night lineup on ABC. A reminder, home improvement. That'll kick off your evening. NYPD Blue will take you to local news. And here another free throw is missed. And there's a whistle pushing foul underneath against Duke. What has happened on that free throw line is Mike Krzyzewski sitting on that sideline with his staff, Quinn Snyder, who told you and I before the game. He said, we're ready, coach. We are really ready. Quinn, one of the bright assistants in America. I'll tell you how bright he's got a law degree. He's got his masters. Why would he want to coach, Brent? Why would he want to coach? Davis on a pull-up three. Yes, it rattles in now for him. What a and he's knocked down three threes here in the first half. What a nice kid he is, too. Talking to him before the game, concerned about his grandma. And McLeod answers with a one for Duke, and that's nine points for McLeod. 
The lead grows to 35 to 18. And he shows his versatility. Bobby Kremitz sitting in the studio charting this because he plays them on Wednesday night. I'll be doing that game. And that's a big game for Georgia Tech. He's six and I guess nine right now and eight in the conference. Need that win. Short. Bobby said it best. He said every year we're on the bubble. And Matt Harpering's having a great, great year, and so is Deion Glover. That'll be Matt Harpering's last home game. What a career he's had. Certainly an all ACC. I don't think there's any doubt. Jamison Carter and Harpering are locks. Davis on a spin move for the Bruins. Drew the foul. Great big time move. And here's my all ACC. All right, disagree with me. I'm going three for the Tar Heels. You probably go four even with Shavon Williams. But I'm going for those three plus Harpering and Langdon because I believe you got to reward the victors. Your second club, you got to look at certainly Nolan, Shavon Williams. Excuse me. You don't. You don't uh, go with winners? How come there's nobody from North Carolina State on that team? Well, North Carolina State. Did award the winners? Well, C.C. Harrison oh. had a big game, but you got to look at the whole long season. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't forget the long term, not the short term. They had that great performance yesterday. Harrison, as we said, seven threes in the first half, eight for the game, 25 in a row in a free throw line. They had the perfect formula, a Don Larson perfect game to beat North Carolina. Ten see, points for Baron Davis already. I know my baseball. I tell you, Don Lawson, see that? We've got a time you know your baseball from the 50s. <laughs> Give it my age away. <laughs> we'll take a timeout. 6.53, 35-20, Duke with a 15-point lead. Duke leading, and now can we have a little uh, music from Dragnet? Three jerseys from Duke missing. Gross, Leitners, and Hills all retired numbers here. But then suddenly the Kings jersey came up missing in Chapel Hill. No conclusions yet. Then Groats jersey is returned here to Duke. Then the dream team signed poster missing from Coach K's office. And a telephone call mysteriously says we'll return Leitner and Hills and then we'll send back Jordan if we get those other two. So folks you make the conclusion on that Mr. Pike. What do you make of all that stuff? I'm going to be Colombo. I'm going to be Colombo. He's one of my favorite guys. I'm going to get him on the act here. I met Colombo at Spongo. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him down here to investigate this. You know what it reminds me Whoa. of? Army and Navy. Who's the mystery man? Who's got the goat and who took the mule? Well, Davis and Blanchard. John Weinstein wrote that great book about the Army Navy series. <laughs> okay. Farewell. Coming to the hoop through the foul. Carwell from out of that St. Louis High School that produced Lauren Woods. Wake Forest rolling on. I tell you, Davey Odom doing a heck of a job. Oh, is he? Yeah. Well, you talk about the back 10. What about Arizona? They just keep rolling on with that great perimeter game of Bibby and Simon and Dickerson. Dude Olsen's kids win a tough game the other day. Went an unbelievable play by Simon. But they've been sensational all year. In fact, they are right now pitching a perfect game in the back 10. No one's been able to beat them. One out west for sure. And that regional final is at Anaheim. Certainly UCLA would love to have made it there, but um, they had a lot of difficulty against Stanford. You can see Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah. 14 and oh. Ready for this. Our producer screaming in our ear. What about Stanford? They can UCLA twice. Let me tell you this. As we see the yes. offensive rebound, Kim Belk, our producer, was a record holder at Stanford as a hoopster. He said no to the Dukies because he wanted to play for the Cardinal. So we got your little plug in, Mr. Belton. That's a way and out of bounds. Highly unusual when Vicky V gets a plug in, isn't it, folks? Hey, wait a minute. Did I say it the way he wrote it out for me? <laughs> Did I say it the way he wrote it out for me? <laughs> oh, 6 18 in the first half. 37 20. And our director played on the intramural team at Colgate. He was playing on the intramural team. He was all the airport, looking at the airport, but couldn't play a lick. Drew Eslikoff. He'll take care of you for that, my friend. Uh oh. Here comes Davis now handling the ball. They trail it by 17, down early. I'll tell you one thing, Carwell's a great defender, and he's playing on Davis now, who doesn't. Another three. What a good looking shooter he is. That's 14 points for him. I'll tell you what I like about him. He's got an air of confidence, he's got a smile on his face. He can play either guard spot. He's just a flat out player. Back comes McLeod. And he answers with another three, and now McLeod has scored 14. I'll tell you one thing, he's got the mentality of a scorer now. He loves the fact that he's become a big scorer, and he's not afraid to take big shots. Johnson's been quiet. This time he gets it to fall. His first field goal of the game for the son of the great Mark 
Marcus Johnson. Player of the year, 1977. Langdon. I mean, that just went right through NBA, nothing but nylon. Bobby Prentice is jumping for joy. He said, are you kidding me? Hey, John Savage, help him out. He's got to play him on Wednesday. To the corner, and they give it back. Johnson's had a heck of a good year this year. Good offensive player. After he was suspended, he finally did things they specified for him to do, but he's had himself a good year. UCLA yanks it away, and this foul going to be called on Duke. And you know, what's interesting is when you look at the eyes of the Warriors, look at Rashawn McLeod, just watch his eyes now and forget everything else. See the intensity that burns for those who play games and sports so very well. You can always read their eyes and tell. They had that focus in their warm-ups. You could feel that intensity. They really feel this is their home. And there's something about home situations. Think about this when you and I talked about it. Billy Tubbs gets beat by 21 at the pit by New Mexico, the Lobos. He plays him yesterday at home, and he beats him by 31, a 52-point turnaround. And that club's got some scorers, baby. They got a kid named Nailin down there who's scoring big time along with Michael Jones. Between them, they had 60 against the Lobos. Watson hits these two free throws, and uh, finally he has scored. It's 43-27 uphill now. Bruins need some defensive stops. Well, remember this. Clemson was able to come back. They were down 24 in the second half and came back and had a chance to beat Duke on this floor. Elton Brand seeing action for the second time, and Johnson fronting him, sealed him up very well on the block. Avery on a drive through the foul on Toby Bailey, and he'll be shooting free throws. Without, without J.R. Henderson, very difficult to come from behind. He has those three fouls, and you got a situation also playing without Jelani McCoy. No real size inside. Avery coming up to the line with Davis over there with his coach on the sideline, 33-year-old Steve Lavin. And of course, replaced Jimmy Harris. And coming up next, the Tucson Chrysler Classic. David Duval going for the record. What a tournament he's had down in Tucson, and we'll be going there after this basketball action. And Avery now makes the free throw and. Avery, seven points on the day, 44-27, the Duke lead. See, I thought you mentioned Jimmy Herrick as we got a foul inside on Baron Davis, a little push. I thought he should have been reprimanded in that situation down at UCLA, and that's been well documented. Now doing a solid job in Rhode Island, where the Atlantic 10 could get as many as five and maybe six teams. It's such an improved conference. John Cheney, to me, belongs in the Hall of Fame because he's the guy that's made it happen for that conference. Well, Baron doing the explain it. He's a lawyer now. The referee said, yeah, bro, I like it. Yeah, Baron, give him a hug. Tell him, come on, Baron. I think Baron being a lawyer, don't worry, coach, we're going to come back. He's a great kid, though. Great personality. Mojo's first point of the game. Crossroads High School, the L.A. area. Again, in case you missed the top of the broadcast, the storyline, Duke wins here today. They'll vault back to number one as Bojo misses again. And if they stay number one over North Carolina, you would think they'd wind up number one in the East. And remember, the regional final is in Greensboro. Big for either of those great schools. Johnson fouled on the jump hook, and so he'll be coming to the free throw line. I think we will take a look at the ACC standings right now. And remember, Carolina, if they win out, if they beat Duke and they wind up tied, Carolina wins because they would have swept the season series. See, I really believe you got to have seven wins to get an NCAA berth. Florida State's been a real, real disappointment. They've lost six in a row. They started out so hot. They were 12-2, and two, beat Arizona. They beat Connecticut. And now Steve Robinson's club is struggling to get a win and have put their backs against the wall. Bobby Clemens, I believe, needs one more win, even though he'll tell you in 95 he was 8-8 eight and eight and 18-12, and 12, and I thought a raw deal didn't get into the big dance and should have been. Hey, uh, we got to alert John Saunders. Be careful. Bobby will recruit you. He's <laughs> one of the best recruiters in the world, especially when he goes up to the Big Apple. Yeah, we he was happy with Kenny Anderson's performance with the Celtics in the first game. Rick Patino and the Celtics beat Seattle 
in Seattle. What an upset that was. Celtics hadn't won out there, Dick, since 1991. I'll tell you one thing. He's also right now in the hunt for Al Harrington, who also may go to Seton Hall or St. John's. But if he leaves the New York area, Bobby Kremitz, who we talked about last night, Bobby, as being a big-time recruiter, has a great chance to get Harrington. Ain Weber believes that the best investment is an investment in education. And today they salute young Earl Watson, the scholar athlete of this game. Ain Weber recognizes that commitment to education. A $1,000 donation goes to UCLA for ongoing research. Ain Weber. You can't lose with an investment in the future. And hey, that's that investment right there. That that's Bill Wall. Goes I, for. Uh, I can't Mike. believe this. I, and that's spelled wrong. Look at this here. I'm a dummy and I can figure that out. It's H A R. Where's the R and the V A R D? Even Kremitz and I could figure that out. Let's pass down low and Brand muscles away with a field goal. That was his first since the surgery. Elton Brand is back. Should have got called for an offensive foul. Got away with one on the inside. But he shows his strength on the interior. I don't blame Steve Lavin being upset on that play. What a great present. What a Christmas present getting this guy back right now. Davis comes back inbounds and makes a great field goal. That's 16 points. We're going to have a freshman shootout. I'll tell you right now, Baron Davis, he has accepted the challenge. Back comes McLeod. This time he misses, but underneath, Brand is fouled, and here this freshman will come to the line. Elton Brand, certainly one of the impact players when he was playing those first 11 games, was really dominant as you look at Calvin Hill sitting next to the mob, Daisy Brand. But this kid here is one of those special people, really knows how to play the game. Think of other freshmen. Larry Hughes has been certainly big time impact at St. Louis. Deion Glover down here with Georgia Tech and Bobby Kermit's team had a big game yesterday in their loss. Glover did. Only two of nine from the line. That's uh, probably their only weakness. Yeah, really not shooting well on a free throw line here today. What a nightmare that's been for Clemson. Nine losses. We had them yesterday. Five points or less, and have shot 60% on a free throw line. The big fella returns, number 42, Elton Brand. And are uh, they loving that he's back? We'll take a timeout. Here at Duke, and he just passed the legendary Grant Hill in career assists. Hill's number 33 retired, and his father, the one-time All-NFL running back Calvin Hill, watching from the stands here today. And Steve Wojciechowski, he has done a lot with his talents. He is one of those determined youngsters who made a great career out of college basketball. I think he's going to be a heck of an assistant coach. I would not be shocked to see him eventually on a staff here at Duke. Bobby Hurley's the all-time leader with 1,076. Bobby had a good opener with Vancouver after the trade. Underneath, pounding away. And finally, finally, Toby Bailey gets one to fall. He's 2 of 11 today with five points. Well, see, here's Bo Bailey. He's being asked to play on the inside with J.R. Henderson in foul trouble out of the gate here. They really lose so much. Losing to Henderson. But this is... The disappointment that Jelani McCoy is not in their lineup. I mean, they're a little different club if you line up with McCoy and Henderson. There's your halftime report. John and Bobby will be in the studio in New York. Mr. Hines is on the floor right now. Wow. The MCI report. Mr. Hines on the floor. I met his mom earlier. Took a picture with his mom, Fader, from out of North Carolina. This guy's like automatic on the line, 91%. Don't put him on the line, Bobby C. I'm giving you a little scouting report, Bobby C. In the studio, don't put him on the line. You know what he just said? Thanks for the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know it. I'm about to face him for three years. 17 points for Langdon. Oh. Make it 18. 18 and a half now. I want you to help your friend out. Who told you before the game he was going to have a big, big game? I want you to tell him. Come on. You did. You oh, came thanks. right to me and said Langdon's going to light him up. Out. The big fella rolls in and missed the shot. He would normally dunk that. I think he was really a little hesitant there. I remember stamina and timing will be a factor. His mom's smiling. She's just happy to see him in uniform. 
What a great intersection of rivalry. Both schools have such great reputations academically, athletically. There's no way this series should end. Six and six. Mike Krzyzewski wants to go on forever. But yet the UCLA people want to end it. Langdon again. How do you leave him open? Will somebody tell me? Wojciechowski playing Davis now. Davis could not answer with one, but an offensive putback by Bailey, short. Just becoming a one-on-one -on -one game right now by UCLA. There's no passing, making that extra pass. All of the philosophy for years of the John Wooden, one of my favorite people of all time. Avery tried to get it to Brand, and it was off his leg out of bounds. So it'll be through and ball. We take a look at Langdon right now. Look at the nice kick out by Matty A. I mean, he's wide open. This is practice shooting for him. I mean, he's the Alaskan assassin. That's what they call him from an Anchorage, Alaska. It's automatic. That's it with the paint. Everything's right with it. Everything's one on one, though, Brent. Everything's one on one. There's no extra pass, moving the basketball. UCLA just being dominated here this afternoon. We're going to watch Trajan Langdon now as they spot him up on the three-point area. We're going to watch him right here. Freeze him. See, right here. Now look at this. I mean, wide open. I mean, that's unbelievable. You can't be able to give this kid great strokes. No hand in his face. It's like automatic when he can get the good look at the goal. He makes by all ACC team, along with Harper and Jameson. And certainly Carter and I throw in Mr. Coda on that club as well. Oh, by the way, he's seven of eight today from the field. Playing good defense as well. He's challenging Bailey. Nice pass. Drop off, but offensive foul. Yeah, it was quit hanging up in the air. Toby Bailey. Things not working well. He had started 101 games and then was benched there last game. Had to come off the bench and spark him to send it to overtime against Southern Cal. I didn't like the way he was practicing, according to Steve Lavin. And there's the charge. There's Battier doing all the little things. Shane Battier, three on Bailey, three on Henderson. And that is a nightmare for the UCLA fans. Henderson with one field goal and Bailey with two. A total of seven points between them here in the first half. The Duke defense rules here today. Really playing well defensively as a team. They ABC's coverage of College Hoops Online. Test your knowledge with quizzes and where are they now? Search for stars all on America Online. Keyword ABC Sports. You know why college basketball is so special, though, Grant? Last year, you got Arizona 11 and 7 in their league, playing a freshman guard, and Mike Bibby finally got adjusted. And the bottom line is they go on and they win the national title, beating three number one seeds. That's the beauty and the essence of the college game. Duke coming down again. The NBA with the four out of seven. Usually the cream will be always on top, but in college basketball, you have surprises. Along with the cream rising to the top. Here's Bojo off the front of the iron. Oh, I forgot you're a big NBA guy. Oh, I forgot he's a big NBA guy. You and I will battle someday about that. No need to compare. You can like them both, can't you, folks? That's true. You can. You can love them both. Matty A's taking the second charge. You know, Brent, that is so true. People tell me, you know, the NBA game has the greatest, as what I say, the greatest athletes in the world, and you love it for that. As you see, Matty A rotating over for the charge. The college game, you got the energy, the excitement of the crowds, and the unbelievable enthusiasm. Seconds of a blowout here in the first half. The Bruins need to regroup. Well, big time. I don't know where they're going to find the necessary weapons with Henderson and Bailey foul trouble like they are. It's very reminiscent of the blowout up in Alaska by North Carolina, who really put the hurt on him big time. Beat him like by a 48. The foul on Davis. I think Steve and UCLA should agree to renew the series if they can bring the Pac-10 referees with them. 
There it is. Look at a margin of victory. Wow. Unbelievable. But you know, they, they lost, I said 40, it was 41 to be exact, 109 to 68 in that blowout. Bottom line, though, officiating no problem here today. It's just a whipping defensively, and they've been doing everything brilliantly, you, uh, the Dukies. They really have played exceptional basketball in the first half. Elton Brand, Elton Brand back in. They're really trying to get him some minutes to get that run for the championship. Remember a player, I'll tell you this, 1983, our guy Jimmy V lost the player, Derek Wittenberg broke his foot, came back and sparked him to win the national title when he came back. Down here in North Carolina, they had lost the player by the name of Kenny Smith, the great point guard, the broken wrist, and they were 17 and 0 in Michael Jordan's year. When he came back, they were like 26 and 1 with Steve Hill at the point, and then they went out and got beat by Indiana in the second round of the tournament. And everybody said Don Dockage stopped Mr. Jordan. Don't believe it. And we come to the end of the first half. Oh, he's through. UCLA 33. Bobby Crimmins must be wondering what's in store for him when Georgia Tech gets ready. We'll find out as we go to John Saunders for that and as you said to be a number one seed and just travel up to Greensboro whether it be North Carolina or Duke that's a tremendous tremendous advantage what a performance in the first half defensively and shooting the basketball and for UCLA their three seniors were four for 23 you can't win when your seniors let you down and don't perform and the bottom line is the UCLA seniors have not performed here today as you look at the stats 26 percent from field goal range look at Duke 10 for 17. I mean, unbelievable job right there by Duke offensively. I'm going to watch Duke in their transition. Secondary phase of game. Freeze it right here. I mean, too late coming out. I mean, that baby's going right in there. He's been doing it all day long. As Lionel Richie said, all night long, baby. Lionel, one of my favorites. Can we start with Duke's possession. You didn't know it was in the music. See? You didn't know I like the Motown sound. Lionel pops out. I gotta break you in, I'll tell you. He sure. <laughs> Lil's yeah. lad, wait a minute, I'm gonna salute you. You said yesterday Lil's lad would win. From Charlotte, 380. 44, UVA 35. And here's what the senior production has done. It is a nightmare for the Bruins right now, and two of them, Bailey and Henderson, saddled with three fouls apiece. You cannot win when your senior production falls off that much. Not against a national power on the road. They got to play big. Now Johnson comes up and hits the first field goal in the second half. He has six points. His dad was so special, Marcus, when he played. Played on that John Wooden team that won the national title in 75. 77 was player of the year. Well, misses on the drive, and Matty A puts it back. Another miss for Duke. And Rojo hustles to the ball and nails the jump shot. If you don't guard people, Bobby Kremitz said it, he doubted very much. You can see a comeback, and I couldn't agree more, unless you're going to start to guard people, make the extra pass, and get good shot selection. Here's Bailey's three. See, that was good play. It was inside, it was outside. They moved the basketball, made the extra pass. J.R. Henderson with a good look to Toby Bailey. Good duo. Langdon with 21 in the first half. Now 23 for the game. He's wide open. Wide open. Little head gets free, knocks it down. He can flat out shoot the rock. 61 points for Duke already. Henderson really struggling. Offensive foul is called that's number four. four. That's four. Wow, that's four. It's been a long day for their All-American candidate. Having a great year. Now he's talking to some of the Duke fans. Smile on his face. There's no smile on that sideline in Steve Lavin's face. Only one field goal. Bakersfield, California. Look at Steve. He looks like a movie star. We're going to watch a little inside-outside action. Free freeze right here. See, now the defensive help goes. He's going to kick it back out, and he's going here. Yes, sir. Toby Bailey strokes it. Now low. Battier. Six for him. Battier plays so well within the confines of a team. He understands what a team concept is all about. That epitomized those national titles for UCLA. They were so unselfish. That pass on the pick and roll. Got the right side. He's got Langdon wide open. 
short. Henderson says, get out of here, little man. <laughs> that little guy will bother you all night long. Make the extra pass. Now dump it inside. Oh, I do. That he had jumped around the corner on the shoulder. Look at the turnovers here. Points off the turnovers, Duke with 15. They live off the turnover. They do such a super job for some turnovers. They've got a margin of plus eight. The turnover ratio. They force, it over. Yeah, they force eight more turnovers than the opposition. That gives them eight more opportunities. And the way they can shoot the three, they usually capitalize. Steve Lavin looks like he belongs right there in Hollywood. I mean, perfect Beverly Hills. Goes down to Nathan Owls for some. What a great deli. Nathan Owls in Beverly Hills, man. I go there all the time up there, Mr. Busberger. Offensive foul against Duke. And that's that's his third foul. personal foul. The key statistic from the first half, as far as the team is concerned, of course, is that the Bruins were held to 26.2 from the field shooting. You cannot beat anybody shooting 26 percent. Wow, he's got four fouls. He goes to thank. Oh, he thought he was going to get a five. So thank you. He's got to start playing now. Just playing. Stop worrying about the striped shirts. Play basketball, Jr. You're a senior. This has been a home court series. The Bruins dominating at the poly and Duke returning the favor here on the camera. And again, this is the last time they will play in the 90s. They put a Duncan show against Duke God in 95 when it won the national title. Kurt is very active today. I mean, he's increasing his PT. We don't see Dave, Damon Dodzowski that much now. He's not played today. I'd go right into Burgess. They got four on Henderson. Go right into Burgess. Go right into him. He's got four fouls. The slide inside. Dump it inside. Langdon on a cut. Foul. Oh, they shoot free throws. Johnson got it. He's automatic on the line. Tomczowski watching from the Duke bench, and of course, with the return of Elton Brand. And if Brand continues to come along, you would think Tomczowski would probably see less and less playing time. Again, it is a uh, just a wonderful thing by the Duke medical staff. Dr. James Nunley operated on that left foot, and it's hard to believe that he underwent surgery back in late December, and here he is. Returned to action in February. It was the left foot. It was the fifth metatarsal. Of course, the bone that goes down toward the little toe on that foot. Well, you got the great medical facilities when you talk Duke out here, their hospital. They got all the premier people. I know Jimmy Valvano when he was battling cancer, when he was being treated at the Duke Hospital, he said, Let me tell you something. They were so beautiful and so special. Jimmy V would have loved it yesterday with the real yes, sir. Did. Oh, he would have been at cloud nine. Langdon gave it up beautifully, and the foul is going to be called on the attempt by Chris Carrowell for the layup. But Langdon very unselfishly passed it off. Well, Baron Davis really hustled all get back on defense to put him on a free throw line. That's three fouls on Davis. You know, look, Davis handling a rock right here. Everybody wanted him. He was America's guest. He was everybody's choice last year as the premier point guard in high school basketball. As Burgess kicking it out with outlet pass all of West Hudson years ago. One thing you can be assured of as far as North Carolina is concerned, they will be focused this week as they get ready for yes, Southern Duke next Saturday. They got a wake up call big time yesterday from North Carolina State. I'm told by people who were there that that was no fluke win. That North Carolina State dictated the game the entire way and then knocked down their free throws. And they took it to him defensively. They held Antoine Jamison only 10 shots. That's hard for me to believe. Well, they did a great job on the boards. Last guy might did the first matchup. North Carolina dominated the glass by better, better than 25. This matchup it was 31 30. Anderson with a spin move foul by Burgess. They out rebounded Carolina by one on that glass. Well, UCLA knows a little bit about Duke, and they know a little bit about North Carolina. Have to play both. I'll tell you one thing about the. I'll tell you one thing about the ACC. As you look at the eyes right here, there's the defensive play of Langdon playing on a defensive end. Look at him right there. Concentration, focus on Watson. Slide, head right on the midsection. The ACC definitely will get five teams. This conference is too good. It's top heavy right now with Carolina and Duke. But I'm going to tell you, those teams in the middle of the pack can make noise. As you look at Henderson, with only a deuce today. Into the hands of Brand. Wojo gives it up, and here come 
the Blue Devils lying them handling the ball. That's interesting to see if Duke now plays with a good basketball IQ and goes right at Henderson. He's got four. And low to Brand, and it's knocked out of bounds from behind by Johnson. Johnson rotating down to give it help about a Crenshaw High School. One of the great schools down here in LA. Produced guys like Darryl Strawberry, John Williams, Marcus Johnson. Brought to you by MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least on the day you call the most. Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Audi in the all new A6. Can one car change the way you look at all cars? And Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. I don't know what to make of this, Dick, but uh, very suspiciously before the game, some of your Duke crazies, some of your fans, they showed up wearing what certainly looked to me a suspicious mind like a marijuana leaf. And they were chanting inhale, exhale. I don't know what they meant as we well. Count on the Duke crazies to pick on the opposing team a little bit. Sometimes they take a step beyond, and that's really not good for college basketball. They get a little carried away as there's the cut by Mr. Davis. Davis with 18 for the game. Across the timeline, Chris Carwell. They want to go inside right now to Burgess. I like to see Burgess try to operate inside. Joe. Turn the ball up high to Burgess right there. Can't score it. And finally, Brand comes through. What a muscle guy inside. Elton Brand. He's a brand, is a beauty, baby. A baseline beauty. Power player inside. Just what the doctor ordered for this Duke team. Henderson muscles in. Taps it back. Good second effort right there by J.R. Henderson from out of Bakersfield. He can play almost any position on the floor. He can be as good as he wants to be. He's had a solid senior year up to 19 a game. Here's Brand. He's a little sluggish, obviously, because his time in the rhythm's not there. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? They beat them earlier this year by 18 over in Bloomington. I was talking to you last night, Brandon, and I said there's a dangerous team, Michigan, if they get all their players in a postseason. Think about 97, you had Arizona with a shot, winning the national title. 96, you have Mississippi State going to the Final Four. 95, Oklahoma State. 94, Florida. Michigan's one of those teams. Excuse me. Excuse me. They can create problems. Excuse me, you don't have a dinner date with Bobby Knight this week, do you? Oh, wow, no, I don't know. How would you like to be in that bus going back to Bloomington? Second worst loss in the history of Indiana. And Bobby Knight. Oh, you don't let him get in that deep. Again. Don't let him score. Don't let him get that deep and get the rock inside. You heard me, Bobby Brennan. You better tell Mr. Jones, don't let him get that deep, Bobby C. Come on, John, tell him. Write it down for him. on Tuesday down at Rambler Rec Country, and I'm going to see if they're going to be working on this. I'm going to watch Mr. Brand as he gets inside. We're going to see him as he posts up as they move the basketball. We're going to watch it. Now, freeze it right here. Freeze it. See, right here. Look at him once he locks it here, and they bring it in here. It's over. you got to beat him to the spot. He's got that big, wide body. He's a space eater. Once he catches it in that deep, so, Bobby, rule number one, deny and get some help from the help side, Bobby. Hey, Bobby, give me a uniform. I want to help coach on Tuesday night. Bobby, see, I want to put a uniform on. I'm undefeated for 19 years in television. I have never lost, Bobby Kermits. Help me out. <laughs> oh, why not have fun? Huh? Fred, Fred, you're laughing at me. <laughs> I just can't help myself. <laughs> so uh, we had some fun last night at dinner. <laughs> yeah, but we made Drew Essikoff pick up the check for director. That was nice. That was great. I hope that Bob Abner up in New York returns that cash in a hurry to it, my friend. Here's a three from Langdon. You just don't see any way possible of UCLA getting back 
to this game because they're not getting enough defensive stops. Henderson. Yeah, Henderson getting some points right now. A little breakdown by Duke. Duke has a tendency to get a little passive. That's an excellent pass. Good penetration. But you got to guard on the defensive end, and that's what Clemson did to get back at him. Clemson really got after him defensively in the second half and got back in the game. Rico Hines, 6'3 freshman, commits the personal foul. That game, by the way, next Sunday is going to be big. Clemson and Georgia Tech at Clemson. That could be for an NCAA berth. The Tucson Chrysler Classic will be coming up next. David Duval, 20 under par. Blowout City. See if he can establish the record. That's Bobby Crimson's guy from down around the red country. If he wins, he'll donate some more money to the program. Look at Grant trying to lay a big screen up on top. Running time off the clock. Duke is very good at that. When they get ahead in this building like this, just forget about it. Little one four set now, trying to get Avery a little one on one. He's got to watch the five seconds count. He's got to watch the five seconds count. Langdon. Offensive putback misses, and Langdon's got it off the glass. That means you just be flat out on the hustle. There's three factors to play in hustling basketball. Forcing the turnover, getting on the offensive glass, and blocking shots. And a foul committed by Duke as Henderson was trying to power back to the glass. Great story in college basketball this year has been the play of Michigan State. TCU certainly been a surprise. There have been some disappointments. Georgia earlier this year was a major disappointment, but as Bobby said, they've been really playing well the last two weeks. Look at that relaxed coaching staff right there. I mean, there's Michael Kay and his staff of Dukies with David Henderson and Johnny Dawkins, Quinn Snyder, all wore the Duke uniform. You can be relaxed too if you are up 75 to 47. Wow. And there's Billy King now. He's a general manager, works for the Philadelphia 76ers, former outstanding defensive player here at Duke. Searching up in Philadelphia, still find, a, find the right kind of team. Ten now for J.R. Henderson. He had only two at the intermission. I'll tell you, Larry Brown's got a good one. And Tim Thomas, they did a great job making that choice. Looks like he's got a heck of a future. Price. Ricky Price has really struggled all year. Came back after sitting out the first half. Got back on the floor, but has not been able to get his timing and rhythm. He said the adjustment's been so tough after missing the first half of the year. Great look by JR, showing his versatility inside and read with the score. He provides some instant offense. Langdon again, and now Trajan Langdon with 27 points. Doing anything he wants here. Nice look, what a great pass. What great vision and feel right there. You see the ability of JR Henderson beginning to focus here in the second half. Fake. See Ricky Price playing for some bragging rights right now from out of California. Oh, no, no, you don't believe it. Oh, 33 points, 32 points. Let me correct myself. Wide open again. Just wide open. Fill it up. Put it in the book. He's automatic. This blowout city here. Today, Mr. Musburger, plus 30. It's been all Duke, baby, all Duke. Little hustle. Dukies headed for number one, and we take a timeout. Quinella today would have been Duval and Duke. Double D, baby. 30 points the Dukies lead UCLA by 82 to 52. And life after Jelani McCoy may not be so smooth for this Bruin team. That's the feeling we're getting right now. Ten and a half minutes.
minutes to go. Well, you know, Brent, they were 9-1 and one without him when he was out early. So they won nine in a row after being blown out. And you see right now McLeod shooting the jumper. When they lost, they got blown out by UCLA. I mean, by uh, North Carolina. They came back and won nine straight. McLeod, 16 points in the afternoon. Henderson backs him down, and he scored 10 points in the second half. Isolate him right there, get a little one-on-one -on -one for J.R. Henderson. You know, the one thing about this UCLA team, last year they got blown out by Stanford by 48. It came back and really turned it around. They've been able to do that. Give it up. He's going to take it right to the rack. I tell you, he's, he's a good-looking player. He is really a good-looking player. A little risky right there with four fouls. Flying up in the air, could have been called for a charge. He's got good ability, right? He'll be playing at the next level. Strong follow by Toby Bailey. Ten points on the field goal, and he'll come to the free throw line. Toby Bailey with that offensive rebound. Remember that game in 95, that national championship game. They had Cameron Dollar step in. I should watch Diaper Dandy take it against another Diaper Dandy. Davis against Avery, and here's Toby Bailey. And Bailey had that 26-point performance. Played brilliantly. In fact, that was a great freshman performance for a final reminiscent in 86 when Duke got beat by never nervous Purvis Ellison, who was a freshman at that year, was super for Louisville in 86. Ellison back on the floor for the Celtics. He played the other night out in Seattle. He's had all kinds of injuries, really curtailed his career. Johnny Dawkins, a member of that 86 team that went 37 and 3. Most wins by any college team in Division I. His number retired, deservedly so. Johnny D, a left hander. Kansas has a chance this year to play 43 games. He had eight exempt games. And what a what a run as you see the clown showing his credibility. Roy Williams, four big 12 titles in a row, right there for all his kids that are seniors. He's averaging only a mere 27 wins a year for 10 consecutive years. That's incredible. Right I remember when you won 20 games, it was a big thing. The average 27? Wow. I'd like to be his agent and we'll find out what they're going to pay him in Jay Walk lands. There's the remaining schedule now. We've talked about the Georgia Tech game, and then, of course, next Saturday, North Carolina, and then the two tournaments, ACC. Well, you know, we'll be here next Saturday. It'll be a 2 o'clock Eastern start. Some of you out west will see USC Washington State. If you're not getting that game, you might want to get your hands on Direct TV or uh, one of the neighborhood sports saloons to check it out because it is going to be a great basketball game here between Duke and North Carolina, and there's a lot at stake right now. I'll tell you one thing, Brett, that I don't like. I don't know your feelings. I don't like the idea of a number one seed playing a number nine. I would rather see a situation where number one got an automatic buy to the semifinals. They can work that out somehow and reward them for the play in the regular season. What's your feelings about number one playing number nine in the tournament? Well, it's an interesting format, but I'll tell you what I would do one year. I'd make number one one of the finals and play eight teams. And whoever can survive the eight team showdown gets a one game shootout for the ACC championship. I, let, I would really make the regular season count. That's really interesting. Interesting concept. Mike Krzyzewski feels that one should automatically go on Saturday and reward him because the number nine could be a very dangerous team where they're emotionally charged. We saw it Virginia with Staples shooting the three and Nolan inside. They can go on a given day and just shock some people. We saw last year NC State pull some shocks going on to the final. Anything can happen in this conference. Virginia yesterday in overtime, we watched them beat Clemson 78-74. Great job by coaching staff up there at Virginia to pull that out in overtime. And uh, Tigers miss some big free throws. And Wake Forest 69, Florida State 68. Maryland has third place locked up as you look at the standings by beating Bobby Crimmins in Tech yesterday, 81-69. So certainly they'll head to the NCAAs. And right now it would be Virginia against the winner of next Saturday's Duke North Carolina game. Of course, some things can happen in the meantime. Dalton at the top. Back is Davis, fires three. Carolina's got a dig with Wake Forest. He's playing really well for Carolina. I know Davey Odom's club's going to catch them where they're going to be an angry team up there in Chapel Hill. Robert O'Kelly, though, has been stroking it. Just like this guy is. Yeah, a little low job. He can 
shoot the ball. He can handle it. He's a coach on the floor. He's a tough competitor. Chris Johnson. He walked, took an extra step. The one thing that really hurt Steve Lavin's club right out of the gate was the foul trouble. As soon as Henderson and Bailey got in foul trouble, you could almost assume it was going to be a blowout, basically. They just don't have enough manpower where Duke rotates. Ten big-time college players. They are so deep. As a point guard on a right, Quinn Snyder. I got a feeling someday Wojo's going to be sitting here because one of these guys will move out and get a head job. Tommy Amica, who's doing a great job with Seton Hall in his first year as a head coach. I mean, that program was really bad, and he's had it with some good wins. Look at the turnovers here. Nice pass by Wojo McLeod. Took get the handle, and then he regains it. Comes up jumping. I'll tell you, Rashad McLeod's had a magical year. Magical senior season, and he will get some votes for all ACC. He certainly makes my top ten. 21 points for McLeod here today. Bailey in trouble again. Price. And the foul is going to be called on McLeod right now. I think you start with great point guard play. When you have guys that can execute at the point guard slot, that's why Arizona and Lute Olsen's club has been sensational. Michael Bibby is the best in America. I mean, yesterday he gets 25 points. He can stroke it. He can handle it. And then he's got some great sidekicks, and they play so disciplined and play as a team down there at Arizona. There's no shock this year what they're doing and dominating the Pac-10. That game down here at Georgia Tech will not be easy for Duke. Georgia Tech is playing, as Bobby said, well, other than a loss to Maryland, lost the double OT to North Carolina, and they're going to be ready, ready to play. Payne Weber College Basketball will be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Trajan Langdon, two points away from his career high with 32. He's hit 11 of 15 for the field, six of nine three pointers. He's hit all four of his free throws, and on top of it, He's pulled down five rebounds. Without a doubt, he is the player of this game. And he's also played great defensively. His career high was 34 against Clemson when they clinched the regular season ACC title last year. Played brilliantly in that game. Wojciechowski loves taking charge. Just understands the concept of how to play the game. Now they go to a 1 2 2 set. Screen down. Good spacing. Cloud. And that is Just winning every battle here today. Steal the inbounds. That's just careless. That's not concentrating. Ricky Price was such a sensational player last year coming off the bench. He was one of the premier all World AIDS guys. He was really special. The best I think is out of the Pac-10 and Jason Terry down at Arizona. Well, tonight, your Disney special is Casper, and then the movie The Wedding, Oprah Winfrey, the presenter of that. And now Bailey moves up to the free throw line. Starring Halle Berry. Want to scale it one to 10 is a 15. Hey, you know, you talk about UCLA. They were 13 and seven last year when they removed the interim title from Steve Lavin. They went 32 and six from that moment to today. And he's really done a heck of a job, got rewarded with a multi-year contract, averaging about 500,000. You talk about a change of life. He was like third assistant in 95 behind Lorenzo Romar. And also, tenth. he passed a pretty good man. Oh, wow. in Gale, yeah. with those free throws at the line. Just hook up the ball has it. What a combination they were. But you know, Lavin, what I was just mentioning to you, Brent, he's really done a strong job in a tough situation. But he was third assistant to Mark Godfrey, who's now doing a great job out there with Murray State, and they'll be in the NCAA tournament. And also with Lorenzo Romar, who's had number nine. On that staff with Jimmy Herrick. Gail Gooderson is gone for the game with his fifth foul. Scored 14 points, only two in the first half when they really needed his 
presence on the floor. He was watching. I tell you, Gil Gooden is one of those special players. That left-handed stroke had a great NBA career. As you look at JR, really had a tough, tough afternoon getting foul trouble early in this game. Didn't they win their first national title in 64? I believe that's the first year that they won one, and then they had 10 and 12 years winning it in 75. And the Wizard of Westwood's last year. Great game today. McLeod will sit down with 23 points. He was great, I'll tell you the truth. He's been great the last month and a half. In fact, in the ACC, he's their leading scorer, averaging 17 a game, McLeod. Yeah, that UCLA Maroon Club of War Hazard and Goodridge. Freddie Slaughter, remember that gang? They were really special. Pressure, 2-2-1 two, two, press. They started to run. Burgess. UCLA trying to come away with a loose ball. And Hussle's got it back. Carrowell trying to stay with it after the Avery miss. And here's Duke again. Wojcicki, and they can take time off the clock. When you come up with all the loose balls, you're out hustling them. Yanked back down by another freshman, Baron Davis. And he's going to try to take it coast to coast and dish it off. Score the field goal that time. Nice oh, play. Rico Hines, his first field goal of the game. Well, Rico from out of North Carolina. His mom is here in a whole entourage. Went out to play at prep school before heading to UCLA. And there's a look at Steve Lavin working that sideline. When you think of UCLA, none better than Lewis Alcindor, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and then it was certainly Bill Walton. What dominant players. Alcindor to me is the greatest center ever to play the game in both college and the NBA for this reason. Total game. Greatest winner, obviously, Bill Russell blocking shots. But a total game, pass, score, shoot, consistency over the years. I don't think there were any better than Mr. Jabbar. Wilt, I want you to know that was Dickinson, that and not me. Well, Wilt was a great athlete. Wilt's the greatest athlete he's ever ever played again. He had superb quickness, athletic ability. I'm talking about the post play, understanding and playing post play. My choice is Jabbar. I certainly can respect you going for Chamberlain. Chamberlain was super strong, great athlete. We're trying to search for everything here. <laughs> Short on the shot and foul. That's a curl move for Langdon. He's got a chance to tie his all time high. 34. What a tremendous leader this guy's been. Seven Final Fours, 91, 92 national titles. Does things the right way. You don't hear about NCAA investigations. And I'll tell you what else he does well, the psychology of coaching, the ability to get high school All-Americans, they got eight McDonald's All-Americans, and get them to understand the share time. This free throw will tie his career high if he makes it. Oh, oh he finally misses one. And he gets another opportunity. They stepped in the lane. They give him another opportunity. That's a no-no. That's the story of the day to this guy, a 91% shooter. I mean, what are the odds of him missing now? For the moment. I ask you who's number two? Oh, Arizona, clearly. They've been on a roll. Toby Bailey, I think even uh, folks who follow the Tar Heels would agree with that right now, and they're saying we'll get it back next Saturday. I guess you look at the top four, those four are just a step above when you talk Kansas, North Carolina, Arizona, and Duke. But somebody will step into that pack like a Mississippi State or Oklahoma State of Florida and Arizona last year and shot before it's all said and done because it's not four out of seven. One game scenario, just one night, especially with a three-point shot. That revolutionizes the game. I admit it.
Billy Knight's first field goal. Billy Knight. Billy Knight gets a deuce on the inside. Remember that name? Billy Knight. Indiana Pacers. Now a big administrator. Can he flat out shoot it from out of Pittsburgh? No relation. Nice pass. Nice. And intentional. Intentional. Cold intentional. Oh, my night. And so grand. And Elton Brand was Elton Brand of old. He would have fought that and just dumped it. Here's the Ivy. Play of the game. The Duke Blue Devils. Elton Brand lines two shots. And maybe one of the few misses, but Burgess slams it back down. Burgess has been reading the newspapers. He knows that Elton Brand's getting a lot more hype than he is on the inside, and Chris is trying to show him that he will be a factor as Elton misses the free throw. Well, all three of those big kids really love playing with one another. Talking about Batty A, Burgess, and Brand, the three Bs who don't get a B, they get an A. Plus. Dr. Musburger, make you the doctor of hoopology up here today. Your boy, Will Chamberlain's going to love you. The Bull's going to jump all over me. But what else is new? But I'll still go with Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Heck of an afternoon for Langdon, 34. It was a short stop. I think baseball is a thing of the past when you start looking at like 180 and seeing that curveball. I think he likes stroking the jumper better, Mr. Langdon. Played professional baseball in a San Diego Padres farm system. Dangerous pass right there, that lateral pass. And a put back. Really getting up on the glass, really attacking the boards, doing what winners do, playing together, playing as a team, making the extra pass, cheering for one another. Reminiscent of what UCLA did for so many years and winning national titles. And they all understood their roles under the master, the wizard of Westwood. So Davis fouls out too. Both Henderson and Davis are gone for the afternoon. Everybody having a little fun in a Duke uniform. It's going to be a long, long journey back to LA. It's tough to keep adjusting. Steve Lavin's had to change his philosophy and adjust four times. Think about it. You don't have no Johnson and McCoy to start the season. Then you get one back. Then you get the other one back. Then the other one is gone. You've got to constantly change your lineup. I mean, it's unbelievable. You can't get that rhythm. Oh, if I only had hair like him, I could be a TV star. Why would I have hair like that? Come on, Brent. Why don't you give me some hair like that? Two shots for Johnson. Tim Channing overrated. You don't want to get people annoyed. You might meet him in a tournament again on a neutral floor. I'm well, pretty sure they'll start Channing. We want the Tar Heels. Who do they want? A team from eight miles up the road? They really want them? I don't know if you want Mr. Jamison and company. I don't know if I'd want him. Time out on the floor. Especially this week. He'll be in an angry mood. But that's the showdown next Saturday here at Cameron. North Carolina and Duke, and we'll be right back. Dick, if this was a fight, they'd stop it. <laughs> and speaking of boxing, next Saturday at 4.30, the WBC Lightweight Championship, Steve Johnston, undefeated, defends his title against George Scott, Atlantic City, Saturday on ABC. Three forty-five to go, and you can see the record. All wow. three advancing to the NCAA title game, and of course that first team of Coach Shevsky's beaten by Louisville. Dick has already talked about that game. You know, you asked me yesterday about Rick Patino's horse down at Gulfstream, beaten by Lil's Lad, but he did a very Patino's horse did a very respectable third place finish. Hallory Hunter, the horse's name, and he still has an outside shot of getting to Louisville for the Derby. And Duke continues to play like thoroughbreds. I'll tell you one thing, talk about thoroughbreds. I know Rick will be like a hero down there in Lexington to come back there in the Derby. That's one of the great spectacles in all the sports, a Kentucky Derby Saturday. Not a good shot. Shot selection's been a problem all day for UCLA. Right out of the gate, they were taking bad shots, and you'll pay big time against this club. See how he hesitates right there? He would not be hesitating earlier this year when he was averaging 16 a game, but again, that's expected. 
Dick, we've talked about the positive side of Duke trying to get the number one seed in the East and thus have to advance to a Greensboro final. What about the negative side? How far can UCLA fall after a devastating defeat? You'd like to climb to two or three. They were only ranked 12th. They're going to fall. What's going to happen to their seeding now? Well, you know, the bottom line is there's still some games to play, and they certainly can step it up. A loss over Duke is not going to hurt you big time on the road in terms of power ratings, but it's got to hurt you psychologically. I mean, you're thinking we've had two chances now to play two of the real heavyweights, and we've come up empty both times with North Carolina and Duke out of our conference. And from that standpoint, I think that's a lot to deal with. And I think the loss of McCoy and what's happened all year with the rumors really been tough. I mean, if I were McCoy, it was a great article written by Bill Flashkey, an outstanding writer in L.A., about the McCoy situation that I really thought addressed it very honestly and right to the point. It's tough to win big time when you have constant chaos within the realm of your program. Comes right back with it. That is William Avery, and he scored 11 points. When I'm talking about winning, I'm talking about winning it all. Certainly, you say he's talented enough to win it. 20 plus games that have shown this year being 20 and 5 coming in here as you watch the score inside by Reed. And it's so unfortunate that the coaches get blamed and everybody else gets blamed when these young people have to be accountable for their actions. I mean, they're old enough to know right from wrong, and many of them are making bad decisions. Rachel Langley picking up at the board, the smile on his face, knows he's had the big, big day. Getting a little bench time. Miss Burgess slapping some high fives, feeling good. There's the lineup for Big Monday. Providence, Connecticut, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Vegas against Utah. Rick Majerus has the Utes on a roll. And that's all coming up tomorrow here as Price comes up with a short one. And Brand coming up at El Brand in his first game back has scored 13 points. An amazing recovery. He had an ultrasound treatment for 20 minutes a day. Then for eight hours each night, they strapped an electrical stimulator to that broken left foot. And during the day, they would come over here and they would strap him in a harness above a treadmill so that they could keep the weight off the treadmill. But he was able to simulate running. Then they devised a very special shoe that he's wearing today. Rigid, but it is still very heavily cushioned. It is an amazing medical story. And Bailey now with 16 points and a loss with mom watching. And of course, one of the things that you have to bring to the table, you can have the greatest doctors in the world, but you've got to bring desire, which is what Elton had to get back on the floor. Don't stay out. And Bailey with 17 points. And the two just work together. And again, the doctor, James Nunley, he is the orthopedic man. In fact, that entire medical crew here at Duke deserves an awful lot of credit and the training staff also. Also great having all the support people around him, starting with mom and a good home cooking from his mom, Daisy, and all the beautiful people that have supported him here in the Duke family. They got to look, Bobby Kremens and Johnny Saunders coming up. What a what a combination guard play that is. U.S. Army Reserve post-game report. Yeah, he's had a quiet 17 here. His daddy was some kind of special player, Marcus. He was sensational, super strong. So the Blue Devils set to jump to number one. Make no doubt about it, they're claimed to be number one. Foul going to be called against UCLA. Bailey was there. Seeing more and more young kids, Brand, come out of high school and becoming factors. Hey, Steve Lavin's going to get on the recruiting trails. He's after a kid named Dan Gutzorek, Gutzorek, about 6'10", from out of Boston, Massachusetts area. Everybody chasing him, and they're one of the finalists in the run for him. We're also after, certainly, Jerron Rush, who's going to make an announcement on Wednesday, and I firmly believe it'll be UCLA. He was the young man that Roy Williams had a verbal commitment from, but was then a little bit upset with some of the things involved in the recruiting process and wasted no time simply saying that he will not be wearing a Kansas uniform. Bailey 
sits down. And for Elton Brand on his return, 14 points for this six foot, eight inch freshman. Well, you know, number one priority today was for Duke to win this basketball game, play well, get after you defensively. And then number two was to see Elton Brand get some good, positive minutes. And they've accomplished both goals here today. Johnson short, gets it back, follows left hand layup. He's a scorer. He's got a scorer's mentality, understands how to score. Chris Johnson, who else? Price off the glass, beautiful. And Ricky Price getting some PT playing time, showing a home points back in California. But he's still a valuable guy on his foot basketball team. Duke puts up another scalp here in the camera. 114 and two in non-conference games since 1983. Oh, oh. And a little frosting. A little showtime right there. A little shake and bake time by Mr. Avery. Right out of the gate, UCLA just did not execute offensively, did not come out and play on a defensive end, and it's been a real whipping right from the opening go. And this will be the sixth week that the Blue Devils have been ranked number one this year. First time started back in early December. On December 1st, when they came back and recaptured it on January 19th. As Coach Oshinsky is bringing everybody in there. That's a good sign, eh? But they play pretty good football there, we should point out. What a football year they had down at UCLA. A great run after losing that opening game. And they did an outstanding job of recruiting because USC, after the messy way that they ousted our friend John Robinson, they had a hard time recruiting against the Bruins of UCLA. And Coach Toledo did a magnificent job. And he gathered some great talent out on the West Coast. Well, you know, after they got they had those two games with Ryan Leaf and Peyton Manning, then they went on a big time run and had a great finish. One of the top five recruiting classes in the country. The final 25 seconds for your number one ranked Blue Devils who have a showdown next Saturday against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Don't miss that one. We'll have it on ABC. Anything they want to do, Mike Chappelle tickles the twelve. It's been all dookies, but they better watch out for Mr. Clemens and company Wednesday night over in Atlanta on ESPN. Brad Nestor and I will be there for that game. Final three seconds. It's and Duke wins it going away. One, two, three, four. The Devils are number one. No doubt about it, Brent. No doubt about it. So for Dick Vitale. I'm Brent Musbeger, reminding you that John Saunders will be coming up next. So long, everybody. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC and Raycom Sports. Brought to you by... Payne Weber. When you invest with Payne Weber, you invest with more intelligence. The United States Army Reserve. Be all you can be. Rogate. Extra strength for men. And priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. UCLA's West Coast attack, however, knows just one gear. Fast. The tempo plays into Duke's hands. The Blue Devils dominate the 12th-ranked Duke clans on a day that sees Elton Brand's remarkable return from injury. Todd Gibson reports from Durham. Here comes Duke, and there goes Duke. The Bruins never really knew what hit him. Actually, it wasn't that hard to figure out. UCLA got hammered by the one-two punch of Rashawn McLeod and Trajan Langdon. McLeod works for 14 first-half points, while Langdon bombs away for 21 on his way to a career-tying high of 34. As if that's not enough, the Bruins have to contend with the return of Elton Brand. The big freshman shows no ill effects of a broken foot. This one is all but done at the break, 57-33 Devils. 
Nothing changes in the second half. Duke's lead never falls below 20 points. 10 Blue Devils score and everyone plays, including Brand, who tallies 14 points and seven rebounds in 16 pain-free minutes. Duke hangs the most points ever scored on a UCLA team and wins going away 120 to 84. I got some looks, and uh, I knew coming in I'd get some looks because I played the same UCLA team last year, and I got a lot of looks that didn't go down, and my teammates did a great job looking for me, and once I got looks, you know, they're, I was fortunate enough that they were going down today. It was great. I'd say maybe a, a C plus, maybe. You know, it was all right. You know, I didn't, you know, I can't do everything perfect like Coach told me, but, uh, you know, I wanted to play as best as I could. The deep get deeper with the win. Duke should move to number one when the polls released tomorrow. Todd Gibson, WRAL, TV5 Sports. Olympics alternate team. Then again, alternate team is just as good as uh, the, Duke's the first got two teams. Yeah, right. Duke's got two top 20 teams over there. It's the old, if you had UCLA in 36, you got beat. So it was just <laughs> not a game. And a funny thing about those polls, huh, folks? Not talking about Clinton's popularity here, though. We're talking college hoops, where after States went over Carolina yesterday, you figured Duke to be number one again if they beat UCLA this afternoon. But would you rank Duke ahead of Carolina after the Tar Heels waxed them earlier this month? Huh? Time to start the hyping rematch set for next weekend. Back to today, Duke with their big guy, Brand back. UCLA with their big guy, McCoy, gone. NBC 17's Joel Perkins has a story. Six minutes, six whole minutes. That's how long Duke toyed with UCLA before putting the Bruins out of their misery. And talk about a long way to go to get a good thrashing. An 18 to eight lead turned into a 12 point margin before the second TV timeout. But that was only a sign of things to come. A Trajan Langdon three here, a Rashawn McLeod three there, another Langdon triple. And before the Bruins could get to the locker room for halftime, they were down 24 and the Devils kept up the heat in the second half. Hammering away from the inside and outside, Duke totally dominated the nation's 12th ranked team, handing them their worst defeat in school history by the final of 120, yes, 120 to 84. Yeah, it felt good, and, and whenever whenever you get looks, I mean, I haven't got looks in a while, you know, playing in conference and stuff. Whenever you can get some looks like that, it, it makes it a lot easier. But they're an outstanding team, and, and uh, you know, we knew we were on the, they came a long way. We were on our home court, and we really wanted to, to go out and play 40 minutes of tough basketball, and I think we did that, and, and uh, when we do that, we're a tough team to play against. We wanted to go out and uh, and make a statement uh, that we're, you know, we're, we're a hot team right now, and, and uh, we're going to play Duke basketball for, for 40 minutes, and, and tonight was uh, we got uh, contributions from everybody on our team. In Durham, Joel Perkins, NBC 17 Sports. All right, thanks, Joel. Hey, Elton Brand, 14.7 rebounds in 16 minutes. Now, assuming Carolina beats Wake Forest Tuesday and Duke dumps Tech on Wednesday, they'll wrap up the regular season Saturday at Duke with the winner taking the top seed into the upcoming He was shaking as UCLA gets hit by an earthquake named Duke. Everyone, I'm Dave Branch with Sports. Number two, Duke stepped out of the ACC to take on 12th ranked UCLA. The Bruins were without center Jelani McCoy, who just recently left the team. And the Blue Devils skinned the hide off the Bears of Brentwood. And News Channel 11's Tony Debo has the story. With a thunderous ovation of appreciation and anticipation directed his way, Elton Brand was a spectator no more. Duke wasted no time in the dismantling of smaller UCLA, beginning with Trajan Langdon. He took advantage of some good created looks. The Bruins were getting at the scouting report. He hit five first half threes, 21 points in his career tying 34. Yeah, it felt good, and, and whenever whenever you get looks, I mean, I haven't got looks in a while, you know, playing in conference and stuff. Whenever you can get some looks like that, it, it makes it a lot easier. Collectively, the now four freshmen were fabulous. Seeing the Bruins helped inspire California native Chris Burgess. Shane Battier did what he does, William Avery the same. Six minutes in, in came Elton, erasing his one-time out for the season broken foot. And all you had to do was watch him throw his body around for 16 minutes and feel really good for him. His 14 points, seven rebounds contribution. Yeah, that's what I, you know, I wanted to do, try to make an impression in the game, uh, you know, go back to my old self, you know, uh, just get in there and play and play as hard as I can. In pouring into a 24-point halftime lead, Rashawn McLeod was again Rashawn McLeod, another sharp 23. Make that Duke was sharp, like 120-84. We wanted to go out and uh, and make a statement uh, that we're you know we're we're a hot team right now and and uh, we're gonna play Duke basketball for, for for 40 minutes. And our kids are really excited to play. You know they they want to come into the gym and they're not tired of playing basketball. They they're really excited about playing. 
in a fashion true to Duke's probable ascension to again number one status. The 120 points were the most ever surrendered by a UCLA team. Tony D.